You're watching College Lacrosse on the ACC Network. It's a picture-perfect 65-degree day in South Bend, where we're set for a top-10 battle between number one Maryland and number seven Notre Dame. Hello, everybody, and welcome inside Arlotta Stadium, along with Brian Benedict. I'm Connor Klingon. These two teams are always in the national title conversation, and that's the case again this year. What opportunity does this game present early in the season? Well, for Maryland, you're the number one team in the nation, and you're playing a top 10 game on the road. It's a chance to continue to uh, show Should we interview somewhere else? So Mom was Dame, listening, or is it a just, tough game or last week against number three Georgetown here at Arlotta Stadium. You're recording, you're recording me? a chance to continue to show I'm your really talent and why you are elite. And Maryland won the NCAA quarterfinal right here at our Lotta Stadium. They're led in large part by okay. fifth-year senior attack Logan Wisnowskis. He's second in Maryland. Should I put on my headphones so I can check my overlords? Goals. And when you look at his game, he's really a Jesus. complete attackman. He can score and dodge from almost anywhere. And Coach Tillman shared that not only is he a role model for this team, but he's not quite sure where the program would be without a guy like him. For Notre Dame, freshman attack Chris Cavanaugh has joined the program, and he leads the Irish with six goals through two games this season. He joins his brother Pat on the attack, and of course they follow their older brother Matt, who was a Notre Dame legend. What are some of the similarities between the Kavanaugh brothers. Faces. And those three are arguably complete attackmen as well. They're athletic and they're fast. More, and they also uh, Durham Academy. Really hard, which can be uh, contagious Expo with their Academy. teammates, and which is Saint great Catherine's. for the Irish on the offensive end. And Just about set for the opening faceoff. Maryland has done very well at the faceoff X this season, over 61% on the year. Luke Weirman has done a tremendous job. I guess there. what did we do? We're supposed to do that at uh, this year. And a what combos. he's really dangerous is not only winning it, but he has the green light to know. push the ball off the faceoff. He has four I goals this, he, this year so far. Uh, yeah, Maryland I mean, I is a team, team that was it required in any, So I guess one out of four. 17 and a half goals per game. Both of these teams, high-powered offenses. Notre Dame, not quite as potent in that game against Georgetown, but they did score 24 goals in the opener against Detroit Mercy. Um, and really, that second half against Georgetown was impressive for the Irish in the way that they bounced okay. back. And so something like that will show up here today against number one, Maryland. As you see, Kevin Corrigan in his 34th season leading Notre Dame. Two tremendous head coaches, John Tillman on the other side for Maryland in his I mean, I would 12th say, year. Uh, should they be more involved? More A lot of mutual less respect less between these two coaches and these two programs. I don't know how you're supposed to answer the next one, but you can figure it out. How opening face off. I don't think they should be involved Notre at all. Dame, and that's important for Will Lynch. Coming off last week, Notre Dame um, won just nine of 29 face offs in that game that against Georgetown. Down. And it put the Irish in an 11-2 hole. They did come back later in that game, but it was a 16-11 final. The Hoyas taking the win last weekend. You mean the... Like just the the government, the yeah. government Connor, monkey around. When we spoke to Coach religious, Corrigan, he shared how this week they really put a focus I mean, on that faceoff game and practiced and it, and it's nice to see a win off the first one. Here's Eric Dobson, the sophomore midfielder out of the state of Florida. Bring it in the zone, right down low, and Notre Dame strikes first. Griffin Westland with his first goal of the season, and the Irish really lead in less than a minute. But I didn't think I could do that. Well, I think I'm going to try to do somebody else. I think I'm going to try to do a grown up because Dobson is a guy for the Irish that will draw I know defenders that quickly. He dodges with his right might, hand down the alley and Westland on the doorstep. He, I don't know what he's good at though. Has one cradle. So Zachary's going to leave on it. Saturday as a train at 11. Well, Brian, when we talked to John Tillman so, you know. earlier this week, he mentioned he was a little bit worried about how Notre Dame would come out. You have the game last yes. year, the quarterfinal, a little bit of momentum in terms of that chip on the shoulder, and the Irish are looking to bounce back, and they have another face-off win from Lynch. If you need, if you need more to me to say more, you can make stuff up or you can ask me on the interview. Oh, yeah. Not only is getting back-to-back face-off yeah. wins good for the Irish, but Griffin Westland is a guy who was a, a key component last season to Notre Dame. And so for him, getting a chance to score this season is good for confidence, good for the team. Yeah, he had 15 goals last season. Chris Cavanaugh down low, and we'll see McNaney control it for the first time for Maryland. Logan McNaney, the junior goalie. 
at his first career win right here at Notre Dame two years ago. That was his first ever start, February 29th of 2020, just before that season was shut down. Anthony DeMeo, he was the hero here in South Bend in overtime in that quarterfinal game. Eric Molliver at the X. Playback for Kyle Long, who was on the Tawarton watch list heading into this season. And now Jonathan Donville, the transfer from Cornell. We see Wisnowskis with the ball for the first time today. Wisnowskis draws a flag and gives over for Donville. And we have a penalty upcoming. <laughs> oh, God. Another element to his game. Wisnowskis does not just dodge from behind the net. He's up top here, having a short stick. He's also on top of man up, so it shows how he has that range to shoot from the outside. Ryan Hallenbeck with a penalty, 30 seconds for holding. So Maryland with the opportunity on the man up. They're 5 for 12 this season. DeMeo. Oh, that hit the post. Shot there from Maltz, and it goes out of bounds. Maryland will keep it. <laughs> Here's DeMeo. For Murphy. Donville looking for some room, gives back for DeMeo. Wisnowskis with a rip, and he's on the board. Seventeenth goal of the season for Logan Wisnowskis. Maryland's first chance on man up hit the crossbar. This time it's Logan Wisnowskis. Going with the underhand shot, you see as he drops his stick, Entman drops as well, which leaves that top shelf open for him to bury it. Yeah, Liam Entman, very strong goalie for this Notre Dame team, but not much of a chance there against Wisnowskis. Nick Harris gives over for Chris Cavanaugh with those six goals to lead Notre Dame through two games. Cavanaugh was the number four recruit in the country, according to Inside Lacrosse. Riley Gray tried to go for Cavanaugh. It's over his head and a turnover for Notre Dame. Finish it off my awesome bag. I'm so rude. Oh. Matt Rayhill over oh, for nice. McNaney. Oh, that's cool. I like that. You can play chess on it. Now Jack Porras <laughs> able to evade the defender. Carter Parlett for Notre Dame. Oh, look at Teddy's looking. He like turned his head. Yeah. It's pretty smart. Did you, uh, are you still? Metro Maryland 4-0 coming into this game. Already with three well, wins over you know, ranked opponents. Loyola, Syracuse, and Princeton. Did you already learn how to do your laundry? And what's also important about those wins is their non-conference, which last year the Big Ten only played within the conference during that regular season. Maryland's scheduling some of the best talent outside of conference early on. Here's Keegan Kahn, the Villanova transfer. Kahn trying to find room on the wraparound. Had it poked away. And Notre Dame scoops up the ground ball with Jason Reynolds, the transfer who came over from Richmond. He was first team all Southern Conference, and he led Richmond last season with 23 ground balls. Down shot there goes high. Notre Dame will keep it. Pat Cavanaugh to set it up for the Irish. Pat leading Notre Dame with 11 points this season, five goals, six assists. And here's his younger brother, Chris. That shot went wide there from Jacoboyce. And Notre Dame will keep it. Morrison Meyer comes back on for the Irish. 
Just over 30 left on the shot clock. Cavanaugh's shot goes wide. And Maryland's there first as McDaney got back. Now, Connor, sim similar to Notre Dame's game last week against Georgetown, they had a lot of shots and they led that game in shots and they're getting good opportunities now. It's just making sure to put that ball on net. And they did outshoot Georgetown in that game, 52 to 38. We'll see what Maryland can do on the other end here. Wisnowskis already with one goal today. Now Kahn back for Wisnowskis. DeMeo. Just facing a double team, gives back for Donville. Kyle Long takes it back to X. Now for DeMeo. Dodging his way in. Back to Long, Wisnowskis tried to get it down low and Notre Dame takes it away. This Notre Dame team has been great on clears this season. Over 93%. As Entman brings it up near midfield. Here's Will Angrick, the freshman out of the state of Maryland. So I'm sure he's familiar with this Terrapins program. Yeah, he grew up 30 minutes outside of College Park. So not sure if he was a fan or not, but I'm sure he wants to put a goal in today. And we do see a flag thrown now. Kavanaugh trying to find some room for Bryce Walker. Kavanaugh, pass missed the stick of Riley Gray, out of bounds, and we'll see what this flag was. It's interference on Maryland. So 30 seconds for Notre Dame on the man up. The Terrapins able to capitalize on their man up opportunity. And with 30 seconds, I'm sure Notre Dame is gonna look to move the ball quickly to attack the net. Here's Westland who had the first goal for Notre Dame to Dobson. Around they go for Westland, back for Dobson. Dobson with a shot. Oh, that hit the cage. Notre Dame will keep it. Westland, now Dobson. Kavanaugh's rip goes wide. Man up has expired. So at even strength now, but Notre Dame with an extended possession here in Maryland's defensive zone. Kavanaugh whirling around, tried to get it over for Dobson, missed his stick, and Jacoboyce unable to chase it down, so a turnover there for Notre Dame will give it back to the Terrapins. And that's two times now that Maryland's defense caused a pass like that against Notre Dame and pushing the ball back on the offensive end. Yeah, both of these teams strong defensively. Maryland allows just over 10 goals per game. Notre Dame at nine. The Irish defensively in the top 10 in the country in that category. Jack Chorus. Now for Brennan. Eric Molliver goes in behind the cage. Now for Wisnowskis. Of 
Chorus working all the way around. Here's Owen Murphy. Transfer from Johns Hopkins. Maryland holds on with Jack Brennan. Just over 10 seconds left on the shot clock for the Terps. Khan trying to find his shot. It's knocked down, only three seconds left on this shot clock. And that'll be a shot clock violation for Maryland. Brian, what did you see defensively from Notre Dame on that possession? Well, really both teams right now are playing solid six on six defense keeping their stick on the man and not allowing any cuts to happen, backdoor cuts that is, to have any wide open goals. So both defensive efforts have been impressive. Just over five minutes left in this first quarter. We're tied up at one in this top 10 battle. A rematch of last year's NCAA quarterfinals. Angrick with a shot and he scores. Will Angrick with his second goal of the season, he gives Notre Dame the lead. Great start between these two top 10 teams and Notre Dame with the early 2-1 edge thanks to this goal from Will Angrick. Just under five minutes left in the first quarter, and Will Angrick with his second goal of the season. That had to be a big one for him scoring against Maryland. That's exactly it. He dodges down the alley, able to have enough room to finish it. But the fact that he grew up just down the road from College Park, I'm sure he's excited to get his second goal against them today. Bethesda, Maryland attended Georgetown Prep. And another faceoff. Notre Dame is three for three on faceoffs today, but Maryland gets a win here from Weirman. Not quite unable to handle it. As here's Hagstrom, bring it the other way for Notre Dame. And that pass sails way over the head of Kavanaugh, so a turnover will give it back to the Terps. Danny ahead for Roman Puglisi. Graduate student midfielder out of Lorton, Virginia. Jonathan Donville, who came over from Cornell for Kyle Long. Long down the alley. Now to Molliver. Donville. Trying to find some space, and a whistle will give it back to Notre Dame. Dobson over midfield. Eric Dobson had an assist on the first goal for the Irish. That one scored by Griffin Westland. Notre Dame thus far out shooting Maryland eight to two. Kavanaugh from a tight angle. Notre Dame will keep it. Ambitious shot there. Well, you noticed he looked away for a moment. I'm sure trying to have the defense or the goalie thrown off a little. So not surprised, but barely missing that. Here's Dobson. For Chris Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh with space, save made by McNaney. And he's able to track it down. Oh, he takes some contact from Dobson. This will draw a flag, and then Cavanaugh came in as well. Starting with the save, McNaney. Gets his, looks like his, his shoulder on the ball, uses his body any way to stop it, then hustles for the ground ball, draws the flag with his helmet flying off. 
Game is starting off physical. <laughs> well, when we talked to John Tillman, he told us every ground ball is going well, to be a street fight, and it certainly was one there. It was last season in this matchup in the quarterfinals, and it here is today, too. Oh. That was a really dramatic game last spring, 14-13 in overtime. Maryland won it. Notre Dame had a three-goal lead in that game in the fourth quarter. Terrapins were able to come back on their way to making it to the national final. DeMeo for Wisnowskis. Back up top, Wisnowskis. That rip was stopped there by Entman from Owen Murphy. Maryland still on the man up. Now Wisnowskis down to goal line extended. They go with Khan. DeMeo, that shot goes high and wide. Maryland will keep it. Donville. Another stop from Entman on the shot from Owen Murphy. Liam Entman standing tall. And it's important early on for Entman to have a strong start, given last week how that game started. But on that man up, Maryland moves the ball around quickly. They are a threat with how fast that they rotate it. About a minute and a half remaining in this first quarter. Notre Dame ahead two to one. Shots are 10 to five in favor of the Irish. Westland will give back for Dobson. Dobson back to the X with Pat Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh tried to find his shot. That went wide, but it will stay here with Notre Dame. Westland, who already has one goal today. Meyer trying to find his shot. This goes over the crossbar. It looked like a save or maybe a tip on that shot. For a moment, I thought it was going to be a shot clock violation. The ball's going the other way. Yeah, you can see the Maryland sideline is livid right now. They absolutely should have, they thought it should have been a shot clock violation. But now Notre Dame can hold for the last shot of this first quarter. Under 10 seconds left. Kavanaugh working from behind, tries the wraparound, and it's stopped by McNaney. <clears throat> and that save is crucial when an attackman like Kavanaugh is caught behind the net with his defender above the net. So McNaney keeping it a 2-1 game. Tightly played first quarter between Notre Dame and Maryland. Brian, what did you see in that first 15 minutes? Well, a couple things. We referenced the defense earlier and just how the six on six settled situations, they're controlling it well on both sides. At the same time, if you're Notre Dame, you have 13 shots to five. It's gonna be an opportunity for really to capitalize more coming up in the second quarter. That'll send us to a break. Notre Dame. USAA is made for the safe pilots. For Mac, who can come to a stop with barely a bobble. Lucia, who announces her intentions even if no one's there. And Sergeant Moore, who leaves room for her room.
with USAA Safe Pilot. When you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. Get a quote and start saving. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Hey, cover girls. Just about ready to begin the second quarter as you take a look at Maryland head coach John Tillman in his 12th season, one of the best coaches in the country. In fact, Inside Lacrosse named him the coach of the decade for the 2010s, and he's continued that into the 20s. Well, we can see the on-field success that he has, but when we were speaking with him, Connor, the culture of this Maryland team has to be special. He talks about wanting the players to be good in the boardroom or to be good fathers after they play here. Coach Tillman spent time at the Naval Academy as well, and he mentioned in a good way he stole a lot of things from Navy and brought them to this Maryland program. He's built a tremendous culture, a culture not just based around winning lacrosse games, but also building some great student athletes to go on and make an impact in the world after their time at Maryland. Here's McNaney, who had that huge save at the end of the first quarter. That could be a big moment in the story of this game. Here's Keegan Kahn, who led Villanova in points, coming over as a graduate transfer. Five key transfers on this Maryland roster, one of them with the ball now, Jonathan Donville. Here's Kyle Long. Donville couldn't handle the pass. And it's scooped up by Jason Reynolds for Notre Dame. Here's Jose Boyer. Senior LSM, and he falls and loses possession. McNaney up ahead for Wisnowskis. Now Molliver. Gibbs back for Anthony DeMeo. Just five shots for Maryland thus far compared to 13 for Notre Dame. Long down low, Molliver scores to tie it up. Eric Molliver with his fifth goal of the season. And Maryland just those now six shots, but two goals on those six shots. Well, Molliver there finds the space on the crease, catches his defender sleeping. But for long, what you like to see there is he has so many hockey assists this season where he's one away from getting an assist. This time he actually finds that open man and ties the game up. And when we talked to Coach Tillman, he mentioned that Kyle Long, it, it might not always be lighting up the stat sheet, but he does all of the little things right. He's the most complete lacrosse player that they have on their roster. And when you watch their offense, he's often one of the guys that will start the movement in the defensive rotation. And he's a threat himself, which is why you see there the defenders were sleeping and keeping their eye on him. Here's Jack Chorus. Over for Murphy and now Jack Brennan. Brennan gets down to goal line extended. Gives over for Molliver. Brennan. Gives back now. Wisnowskis with a shot, he buries it. Logan Wisnowskis with his second goal, and Maryland has taken the lead. Wisnowskis showing that versatility. His first goal was planning and shooting it, and now this time on the run, <laughs> puts it five hole and gives the Terrapins the lead. It actually hit off Entman's leg, so he almost made that save. Yeah, how about that? Going right off the shoe there into the back of the net. Violation on the faceoff. 
So Maryland will take possession. Notre Dame got off to a good start at the faceoff X, three for three. We mentioned last week against Georgetown, that was a big issue for the Irish. Here comes Long down the middle. Gives off for Wisnowskis. Wisnowskis facing pressure from Boyer. Long swings it across. What a fake, Entman makes the save on Molliver and then a big collision right in front of the cage. Entman standing tall, making that stop. Big, especially the other one going in and making that stop there. Donville, it hit the crossbar. That's a few for Maryland that have hit the crossbar, both between man up and just settled offense. DeMeo on the wraparound. Antiman makes the stop. Picked up by Ryan Hallenbeck. See what Notre Dame can do after Maryland has started out really controlling this second quarter. And a possession like this could be good for Notre Dame. You see them slowing it down, getting their first line middies in. Here's Jack of Boys. Now Kavanaugh. That shot went wide. Race for it, and it will be Maryland ball. Oh, it was just a mistake from the official. The Notre Dame bench had no idea what was going on there, but it was just signaled the wrong way. So the Irish will keep it. To that end, though, you see just how aggressive these guys play, Maryland, and they hustle. McEnany was even trying to get out there to back it up. And there is Brett Maycar as well. As you see, Kevin Corrigan, 34th season leading Notre Dame. Most wins of any head coach at a single Division I program with 314. But the Irish still chasing that elusive national championship as we take a look at the replay. Both teams hustling and even diving to be the closest man when the ball goes out to gain possession. Ajax Zapatello there, the sophomore, making that diving effort for Maryland. Pat Cavanaugh with a shot, he scores to tie it up. Pat Cavanaugh with his first goal of the day, his sixth of the season. You knew eventually this game, one of these was gonna drop. Sets up a little two-man game. The defenders don't switch just quick enough. And he ties this game up. 10 minutes to go, second quarter, knotted up at three. Pat Cavanaugh with the goal, but Maryland with the faceoff win. Luke Weirman with the win there for Maryland, and he's done a tremendous job at the faceoff X this season. Already two-time Big Ten Specialist of the Week. Here's Jack Brennan for Wisnowskis. And Brennan sets a screen for him. Shot and a goal. Jack Chorus on the assist from Wisnowskis and Maryland back in front. Morris with the nice cut through the center of the defense. 
And he actually runs to the pass, and that helps gain that separation from defenders. And he puts Maryland back up. So Maryland had just one goal in that first quarter, already three just over five minutes into the second. What have they been doing better offensively? Well, it looks like picking their spots when they're shooting. You've seen a few of these drop, not necessarily missing the net and getting them past Entman. But Maryland's a team that's dangerous and can go on runs. Last year in this quarterfinal matchup, they scored three goals in the fourth quarter in less than a minute. Helping them to tie that game. Went into overtime and the Terrapins with the 14-13 win last spring on their way to making it to the national championship game before they fell to Virginia. Jackaboyce down the alley, this goes high. Notre Dame will keep it. Wheaton Jackaboyce out of Kansas City. Dobson. Nice job defensively. Ajax Zapatello. And here comes Maryland. Unsettled situation. And the Terrapins score once again. Roman Puglisi makes it a two goal edge. It starts on the defensive end with the turnover, and we know Maryland likes to push the ball, not just off face-offs, but in unsettled situations. And here having numbers, just too easy for him. Puglisi with his third goal of the year. And now Weirman with a face-off win. Maryland outscoring Notre Dame four to one in this second quarter. Here's Donville, who came over from Cornell. Also the alma mater of head coach John Tillman. Here comes Long. Donville, stop made by Entman. Key save there for the Irish, who look to get out in transition. Quinn McCann for Kavanaugh. Chris Cavanaugh over for Carter Parlett. And Connor, one thing about this Terrapins team that impresses me, they rarely give up transition goals. They get back into the hole as a team, they find their man, and there's another opportunity or another case where they just showed that. Yeah, it looked like Notre Dame had something going. Maryland got back very quickly. Here's Gray, 30 seconds on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Richie Ardelli, over for Angrick, who has a goal today. Nowhere to go for Richie Ardelli, as that was cut off by Matt Rahill. Kavanaugh, 10 on the shot clock. Now Angrick, five on the timer. Notre Dame unable to get a shot off, a shot clock violation. Really strong defensive possession from the Terrapins. Yeah, as a unit, that defensive team is playing well, making sure that there's no backdoor cuts, staying on their man and communicating. But a very nice play by Nick Harris. And here comes Notre Dame in transition. Kavanaugh just couldn't hold on there and now Maryland will bring it the other way. Pass was a little bit behind Chris Cavanaugh. So we'll see what Maryland can do on the other end. Bubba Fairman. And we have a whistle. 
Looked like that might have been an offsides call, so could have been a subbing or miscommunication for Maryland. But either way, the ball's given to Notre Dame. Here's Morrison Meyer out of San Diego. Now Pat Cavanaugh. That pass missed the stick of Jacoboys. And here come the Terrapins. Molliver right down the middle. Donville just wide. He was just so close in on Entman there. Almost didn't really have enough room to get much accuracy on that shot. And Notre Dame almost paid for it again with the back to back, over and back rather, turnover. That'll send us to a break. Maryland ahead, five to three. They've outscored Notre Dame four to one in this second quarter. This is why you want farmers claim forgiveness. Your home premium won't go up just because of this. Wow, that's something. You get a whole lot of something with farmers policy perks. Get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Let's make a toast to doing more this spring. Actually, let's make two. Introducing creamy hummus and savory avocado toast. Topped with oven roasted tomatoes, vine ripened, and perfectly. Welcome back to Arlotta Stadium. Maryland ahead 5 to 3. Head coach Kevin Corrigan in his 34th year leading this Notre Dame program. What a job he has done here. We mentioned it earlier, the most wins by a head coach at a single Division I program. And that's impressive to say the least. And the same sentiment that we talked about with Coach Tillman, Coach Corrigan really does care for his players, and he does a fantastic job with these guys networking after college to make sure they're set up for their futures too. Yeah, both of these programs, there's a lot of shared values between these two schools and these two programs. Not just about making great lacrosse players, but great young men to go out after their time in school. As you see, Matt Rayhill, graduate student. And there is head coach John Tillman. His Maryland team at 4-0. Hoping to stay undefeated and maintain that top ranking in the country. Here's Keegan Kahn. Long spinning his way. Now with Snauskis. That shot may have been affected there as it sailed well high. Long going to work from the X, and there was a whistle. That will give it back to Notre Dame. Brian, Notre Dame with just one goal in this second quarter. How can they get something going offensively here? Well, you see Dobson on the field right now, too, and Meyer getting the ball. Having your first line back in, slowing it down for a moment, and just working the ball around. They've had their opportunities. It's just time to finish. Pat Cavanaugh from the X. Now Jacoboys. Zapatello defending Jack of Boyce, now over for Dobson. Kavanaugh into some traffic, took some contact, lost possession briefly, scoops up the ground ball, and he took some shots there. Just showing his toughness, and I don't know how he held on to that ball. You know, tried splitting the double team, ball went on the ground. He stayed with it and somehow scooped it up and, and held on to that possession. And Notre Dame took the timeout, maybe just to give Pat Cavanaugh a little bit of a breather there. It could be that. Could be making sure they could set up something offensively, but because of this effort individually with three Terrapins around him, Notre Dame still maintains possession. 
Maycar, Higgins, and Zapatello all there. And Brett Maycar, a, a great leader for this Maryland team, the senior. We were talking to John Tillman. He told us he's the type of player who plays a game on Saturday afternoon. After the game, he's at 5 o'clock mass on Saturday <laughs> nights. <laughs> he's got plenty of options here on the campus of Notre Dame. Yeah, and the right time of year, Lent starting. <laughs> Well the, well, the good thing for Brett Maycar is, is when you're in Maryland, they got great seafood. So it's a great place to be this time of year uh, if you're Catholic. And apparently, you know, the weather here too, as far as bringing that along with them, it's a gorgeous day in South Bend. Man, you see a lot of Maryland fans in attendance at a lot of stadium. We're walking into the game. There's a whole RV here with a big time tailgate setup. Awesome atmosphere this afternoon. These are dedicated fans. We know Maryland, not just as an institution, but that area of the country is big for lacrosse. They host some of the Final Fours in, in Baltimore and now traveling here too. Plenty of Notre Dame fans in attendance as well. Some students that stayed for spring break, they wanted to check out this top 10 matchup before heading home or to Florida or wherever they might be going. I mean, between this game and, and hockey, I believe, Notre Dame's campus has a lot of games here today. A lot going on. Basketball game just across at Purcell Pavilion, Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. Big Ten hockey tournament, Notre Dame and Wisconsin. Top Ten lacrosse game. Tons of action here in South Bend. Kavanaugh for Dobson. What a save by McNaney. Oh, but it's stolen away by Kavanaugh. He's unable to score. McNady makes the stop again. What a play. Logan McNaney, two fantastic saves. Nine times out of ten, that ball goes in. McNaney, not only does he realize that he caused the turnover, he gets back in net. And with Kavanaugh throwing fakes, McNaney stands tall and, and makes that save. That is real difficult and impressive. He got an ovation there from the Maryland crowd as well as the sideline really fired up the Terrapins. Just over three minutes left in this second quarter. Murphy, that's a stop by Entman. So both goalies making some nice plays. Here's Dobson. For Kavanaugh, goal line extended, now takes it in behind. Meyer trying to find some room. Notre Dame with only one goal in this second quarter. Tried to get it over there for Riley Gray. And Notre Dame turns it over. What great defensive work from Maryland in this second quarter. Yeah, Notre Dame led in shots pretty significantly in that first quarter. Here it's a little bit closer, but it's really due to the pressure that Maryland's putting on them. Maryland will take a timeout with just over two minutes left in the second. Notre Dame has gone now over eight minutes without a goal. The last goal came from Pat Cavanaugh with 10.06 left in this second quarter. But Cavanaugh was on the doorstep, stopped by McNaney. Last week, Notre Dame faced a tough goalie. And so far today, McNaney was seven saves and none bigger than that one from stopping a goal. Yeah, you can see Pat Cavanaugh had his hands on his head. He's probably had a situation like that hundreds of times in his lacrosse career. How many times do you think he's been stopped? <laughs> Not often, but give him credit too, where as an attackman, guarding the goalie like that and being able to get a, sto a steal in that way, but finishing it, you know he wants that back. And you see there the Notre Dame women's lacrosse team in attendance. They'll take on Virginia tomorrow afternoon at noon. It'll be that game between a couple of top 20 ACC teams. And the women's team for Notre Dame off to a tough start, but their past two games against 
Northwestern and Syracuse were down to the wire. It looks like they're finding their groove for the Irish. They're looking to bounce back. The men's team here looking to bounce back after last week's loss against Georgetown. And Maryland hoping to maintain that undefeated record. You know, Brian, we talked about it at the top. Maryland didn't get the opportunity to play a non-conference game last year, so maybe felt a little bit disrespected going into that NCAA tournament as a three seed. They also had to play on the road as the three seed in the quarterfinal here. Ended up coming up just one goal short of the national title. Yeah, they proved they were as good as advertised, but this season now they play an out of conference to start. You don't have to question it that same way. Here's Kyle Long. Entman makes the save. A couple of big saves from Liam Entman with his team trailing by two. Now McCann with some room. Went down low for Westland. About a minute 20 left in the first half. Jack of Boyce. Down the alley. Zapatello got a stick on it. And a flag is thrown. For Maryland, it almost looked like a great defensive stance of causing another turnover. And with a minute left, potentially having the ball go the other way. But instead, Notre Dame keeps it, has a man up chance to make it a one goal game. Zapatello. The penalty, it'll be one minute. So Notre Dame with the man up just about to the end of this first half. Notre Dame 0 for 2 thus far on the man up today. Kavanaugh down low, Richie Ardelli, the save is made by McNaney. They just can't get anything by him in this second. There he even drops down where sometimes that ball could sneak into the net, but he dropped on the ground quick to make sure that didn't happen. Kavanaugh scoops up the ground ball. Chris Kavanaugh for Westland. Finds space and scores. Griffin Westland with his second goal of the day, and Notre Dame's back within one. Westland went from being shut out so far this season to scoring the first goal for Notre Dame, and now this one. And those off-hip shots and that placement is perfect. But what's more important is seeing that ball go in for Notre Dame with how good McNaney's playing right now. They had gone nearly 10 minutes without a goal in this second quarter, but they get one by near the end of the half. But Weirman with a key face-off win has it ripped away. Jason Reynolds had the cause turnover. It's still loose, near goal line extended. And a whistle will give it back to Notre Dame with two seconds left in the half. And that will do it for the first half, a tightly played first 30 minutes between these two top 10 teams. Brian, what are your thoughts on that first half? Well, actually, this second quarter was more scoring than the first quarter, but there was even more saves and impressive saves on each side to keep it a tight game. A great battle in this rematch of last year's NCAA quarterfinal. Maryland ahead 5-4 to four at the 6-5 to five in faceoff wins in the first half. It'll be Luke Weirman going up against Will Lynch. And Weirman doing a really nice job with some physicality there to get the faceoff win for the Terrapins. To that point, if you're Notre Dame, I'm sure at halftime you notice how that faceoff 
wins was pretty even between Maryland and Notre Dame. And given last week's game, that's good to see for the first half today. Here's Kyle Long. Maryland came into this game, we mentioned earlier, they were sixth in the country. And faceoff wins as Long scores on the wraparound. Maryland's lead back up to two. Long showing he doesn't have to just dodge up top. He can take a short stick behind the net. And he's so quick where as soon as he gets that first step, even with the defender on his hands, he turns the hips and finishes the shot. And Weirman with an easy face-off win there for the Terrapins. So a good start for Weirman to this second half and Maryland with another opportunity offensively. Donville works in behind X, trying to find his shot. Now they go up top with Snauskis. Back for Long. Now DeMeo with a shot and he scores. Anthony DeMeo with his first goal of the day. Some good memories for him here as he scored that overtime game winner last year in South Bend. Not sure if it was a part of the halftime talk, but Long's behind the net again, keeping his head up to find his teammate. And DeMeo scores another one quick into this half. Two goals for Maryland in a minute and 13 seconds. Brian, you talked about that quick strike last year in the quarterfinal. They had three goals in less than a minute. Two goals very early into this second half. And it all starts right there, getting those face-off wins and providing the pressure that Maryland likes, and then it just follows with execution. Here's Jack Chorus. For Brennan, down to goal line extended. Brennan finds a shot and he scores. Three goals in less than two minutes for Maryland and they've stretched the lead to four. Again coming from behind X. And all three of these goals this half have come from this side. That one-on-one -on -one dodge with the defender on his back, he finds space to score the third in this quarter. And now some pressure on Will Lynch on this faceoff. You don't want Maryland to start that make it, take it, but Maryland with another faceoff win. Here's Khan. Oliver on the right side against Reynolds. Now he gives off for Owen Murphy. Wisnowskis right out in front. Entman makes the save. Huge save for Entman. That would have been the fourth goal of this second half for Maryland already. Yeah, and that's a big save on the doorstep, slowing down the momentum and gaining back some of that confidence in the net. Bolivar. Wisnowskis. Wisnowskis. Trying to find some space, puts it out in front. A flag thrown here. There was a save from Edmund. But a penalty coming. Okay. Well, before you get in the bed, just say, good night. Yeah. yeah. And even with that physicality and the push in the back, it is still another big save for Entman. 
stopping the ball because if that ball went in, it would have counted. But now if you're Maryland, you have a man up opportunity to extend and stretch that lead. Nick Harris commits the penalty. So Maryland on the man up. Wisnowskis. Khan. That pass mishandled. Still loose. And Notre Dame with the ground ball pickup from Hallenbeck. Irish trying to get it clear with the man down. Parlette. Trying to let some time drain down. It's Notre Dame with the man down. And that was a good decision by Parlett not to force anything. Give the defense a break. Have your first line middies come in. Here's Meyer. Cavanaugh. Over to his brother. Chris Cavanaugh. Meyer up top. Trying to find some room against Fairman. They go down for Pat Cavanaugh. Working against Maycar. Cavanaugh with the shot, the save made by McNaney. Here come the Terps the other way. DeMeo, already with one goal in this second half. I'll bring it back to X. Maryland has opened up this second half on a 3-0 run. DeMeo. Looking for some space. Now gives behind for Khan. Khan looking for some room. Circles back, shoots, and it goes wide. It will stay with Maryland, 20 on the shot clock for the Terrapins. And that was a nice move by Khan, even though he didn't finish it. He got to the center of the field and turned back, protecting his stick to rip it. That pass missed the stick of Wisnowskis. Maryland trying to keep it alive, just five seconds on the shot clock for the Terps. And they'll just take the shot clock violation and will give it back to Notre Dame. Notre Dame without a goal in this second half, nearly six minutes in. We saw a long stretch of eight minutes without a goal in the second quarter for Notre Dame. What do they need to do to get the offense going? Well, part of it is lacrosse is just a game of runs. So there's, a, there's chances in games that this happens. Maryland goes on a run, Notre Dame answers. We saw that last week with Notre Dame and Georgetown. There's really nothing different other than continuing to attack the net, but wanting to make sure you finish. Here's Angrick. Down for Pat Cavanaugh. Maycar doing a nice job on Cavanaugh there. Now a shot and a goal, and Notre Dame needed that from Bryce Walker. The Irish back within three. The sophomore from Austin, Texas, gets a chance to show what he's capable of with a short stick on him behind the net. Gets enough angle to move McNaney off of that near pipe and stops the bleeding for the Irish. Bryce Walker from Austin, the all-time points leader at Westlake High School. Looking to be the star lacrosse player from that school that's known as the cradle of quarterbacks. <laughs> if you remember Drew Brees coming from there, Nick Foles as well.
Here's Jack Brennan. Now Murphy. Back for Chorus. Maryland looking to push the lead back up to four. Murphy works in behind. Wisnowskis spinning his way into some traffic. He loses possession. Here come the Irish the other way with Reynolds. Trying to catch Maryland unsettled. Reynolds has it poked away. Zapatello brings it the other way for the Terrapins. Back and forth we go. And we know Reynolds can be dangerous for Notre Dame in transition. He has an assist this year. But what we talked about earlier is just how quickly Maryland recovers and gets back into that defensive hole and cause a turnover. A really nice job there, preventing a transition opportunity for Notre Dame. As here's Donville. Wisnowskis with a rip, Entman makes the save. Ben Ramsey nearly lost possession. Notre Dame holds on with Pat Cavanaugh. Now his brother Chris will wait. As Notre Dame brings some fresh bodies on, getting that top attack line out. Top midfield line for the Irish. Here's Dobson. Oh, a big hit there. Zapatello took from Kavanaugh. And now Westland, under 30 on the shot clock. Dobson. Meyer for Jacoboys. And Meyer has it poked away. Roman Puglisi with the ground ball pickup. In the first half, we saw Notre Dame a little careless on some of those passes on offense. And just there, it happens again. At first, you thought the hustle by Kavanaugh was going to keep the ball on the offensive end. But the turnover happens. 13 turnovers for Notre Dame, 12 for Maryland. But a couple of big cause turnovers for the Terrapins that we've seen in this third quarter when it looked like Notre Dame had some good chances offensively. Owen Murphy breaking some ankles there up high. <laughs> Impressive player. Came over from Hopkins. Bolivar with a shot that goes wide. Yeah, Owen Murphy sat out last season. And then Able to get started back with this Maryland program. Really strong year for him thus far. Chorus, 10 on the shot clock. Behind for Oliver. Now Brennan with five on the shot clock. It gets by Entman. Initially, it looked like he made the save, but it got by him. And Jack Brennan with the goal to put Maryland back up by four. And as a goalie, those are always the ones that are tough, where you put your body in the right position, but somehow it still sneaks in. And Jack Brennan now scoring. Do you think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or the places we didn't go.
Welcome back to our Lotta Stadium. Maryland ahead 9-5 to five in this top 10 battle. It's been a dominant third quarter for the Terrapins. Yeah, the face-off game has changed in this second half with Maryland, and they're making Notre Dame pay. And it's been a couple of new names in this second half that have scored too. So showing that versatility and just how many guys can be a threat for the Terrapins is a big reason why it's a 9-5 game. Nine goals, seven different players have scored those goals today for Maryland. And that last one coming from Jack Brennan. And the Terrapins with another face-off win. Brian, you mentioned that was starting to change. It was six to five at halftime in favor of Maryland. They've won every face-off in this third quarter. And the scoreboard will reflect that. And, and you see it with all the opportunities that the Terrapins are getting. Long to goal line extended. Long right in front, Entman made the save on Daniel Maltz. Race towards the sideline, Notre Dame gets there first. Big play there from Arden Cohen to hustle and get his stick out there. We've seen a few guys on each team dive to maintain that possession and Cohen doing the same thing at a key time for the Irish. Cohen preseason all ACC. Feels like a critical possession here for the Irish trailing by four. And you see it again subbing in. Now Meyer last week went on a little bit of a run against the Hoyas. We'll see if he can find a shot today. Dobson behind for Pat Cavanaugh. Over for his brother Chris. Dobson. Goes for Westland. That missed the stick of Meyer. Race for possession here. Meyer got there initially, just tied up near the sideline. Maryland has it a push in the back from Dobson. It'll be Notre Dame possession. Looks like the refs might think that push was in the side. Either way, both teams hustling and playing physical and wanting that ball. Uh, two of the elite programs in the country, the only two programs in college lacrosse that have made the NCAA tournament 15 years in a row, but a turnover there for Notre Dame. Unforced air there for the Irish. And that's another one this quarter and between the face-off wins going towards Maryland and having some of those unforced turnovers, it makes it more difficult to try and climb back. Jack Chorus defended by Quinn McCann. Wait for some subs to come on for the Terrapins. Chorus working from behind for Wisnowskis. Big shot, but he had it blocked. Now Wisnowskis racing in, back towards the middle. That shot went wide. Ball is still loose near the cage. Flag goes flying. Notre Dame will bring it the other way. Hallenbeck with 120 to play in this third quarter. Gifts for Pat Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh from the X. Puts it out in front to his brother. And Notre Dame's back within three. Pat Cavanaugh to Chris Cavanaugh for the sixth goal of the day for the Irish. And when you're playing the X position, like Pat Cavanaugh was, and your defender is caught yeah. above the net, that gives what? you time to look for your teammates 
Monday. To have some cutters. Well, I'm taping something. Are you looking to do more? And this time photos? he finds his brother, who hesitates and comes back. Well, to I score. got this going for another. First goal of the day okay. for Chris Cavanaugh. He leads Notre Dame with seven goals this season. So cute, and Notre Dame nearly He's had the face-off win. Ball is still loose. Guys once a week while not camp. Oh, and it is scooped up by the Terrapins. John Gepper. Big ground ball pickup there after the Notre Dame goal. Oh, Maycar had it ripped away by Kavanaugh. Now he scoops up the ground ball. Less than 30 seconds left in this third quarter. Westland with 20 seconds. Now Dobson. 10 seconds left in the third. Kavanaugh, the wraparound, and he scores! Pat Kavanaugh pulls Notre Dame back within two. The Kavanaugh brothers bringing the energy back for the Irish. You know, do you know I'm home for a while by myself? In that first half, they were relatively quiet, giving credit to Maycar and Zapatillo and Ray Hall and those defenders, or Ray Hill rather, and those defenders for Maryland. But they're relentless. <laughs> And Pat Cavanaugh shows that. Has the dodge from behind the net. And the backhanded finish to score another goal. Weirman with the faceoff win with one second. He's taken down. That will do it for the third quarter. It was a third quarter. You might be able to print it from your phone Maryland, or your computer. But two late goals from the Kavanaugh brothers no? have Notre Dame within two as we head to the fourth quarter from our Lotta Stadium in South Bend. Okay, it might be 20, 25 minutes. It's the, uh, it's going this to the fourth quarter. This is why you want farmers claim forgiveness. Your home premium won't go up just because of this. Number one, Maryland, with a 9-7 to seven lead over number seven, Notre Dame, as we head into the fourth quarter in South Bend. And another tight game between these two programs after they had a classic quarterfinal in the spring. Well, Connor, we talked about lacrosse being a game of runs. Last year in that matchup, three goals from Maryland in the fourth really changed the game. And today, in this third quarter, Maryland went on a run, and then Notre Dame answered with two goals. Maryland had been outscoring Notre Dame four to one in that third quarter, but then it was the Kavanaugh brothers and who else <laughs> to bring Notre Dame back within two. And give credit to them where they've been relatively shut same down when it comes to scoring. No At the same time, like the work work, ethic man. and the effort that they put in yeah, to continue to, to fight, not just on the comments. scoreboard, which we see, but causing yeah. turnovers and trying to win this game. Face off between Colin Hagstrom iPod, and Luke Weirman. So. <clears throat> I wasn't as addicted. I mean, it was. Mm. But now it'll be mm. difficult. Maryland came away with it initially, but then a quick. You know what? You might be able to send. The pass I might be able to do it from my iPad, huh? Okay, so that's I'll a break for Notre Dame after right. the face off win for Maryland. Is this on, like, uh, yeah, I haven't changed it. Okay. Does it still have uh, the photo paper in it, or do you take it all out? I kept it. Okay. Dobson in behind Pat Kavanaugh. Now Jackaboys. <laughs> Jackaboys with a shot saved by, made by McNaney. Notre Dame will keep it. Good effort there by Ray Hill, but it stays with the Irish. Meyer dodging his way. Now for Dobson. Jackaboys thought about the shot. Hard contact, contact there from Puglisi. Just over 30 seconds on the shot clock for Pat Cavanaugh now. 
Kavanaugh goes to the backhand again, but not this time. It will stay with Notre Dame. Fresh 60. Not only a big save, but a strong defensive stance so far for Maryland, but not allowing Notre Dame to score. Kavanaugh's pass deflected out of bounds, so it will stay with Notre Dame. Jacoboyce looking for some room. Down the middle, he scores! Wheaton Jacoboys with his first goal of the day, and Notre Dame is within one. In that quarterfinal matchup we just talked about from last year, Jacoboys was the leading scorer for Notre Dame. And this time he dodges to the center of the field, right down the heart of the defense, tucks his stick, and makes it a one-goal game. You mentioned it earlier, Brian. Lacrosse always a game of runs. Now a 3-0 run for Notre Dame has pulled the Irish within one. Violation on the faceoff will give it to Maryland. Here's Anthony DeMeo. Scored a number of clutch goals in his Maryland career. Four game-winning goals, including that overtime game winner in last year's NCAA quarterfinal. Kyle Long looking for space. That shot goes well high and wide. But Keegan Kahn was there for the backup for the Terps. Entman trying to track down the ground ball. He gets to it. Notre Dame will bring it the other way. Hallenbeck, chance to tie the game for the Irish. Pat Kavanaugh stumbled down. Now it's taken by DeMeo. Maybe an opportunity for Maryland in transition. Bubba Fairman. Wisnowskis, oh, what a rip there that went wide from Zapatello. It'll stay with the Terps with Molliver. Talk about a sequence of events. Entman gets the ground ball. Kavanaugh at the other end. And then the shot down here, which I thought had a good chance really to go in. Donville backing his way in. Now for Wisnowskis. Shot went high from DeMeo. It will stay with Maryland. Donville at the X. Working against McCann. And Donville shot went high and wide. Maryland will keep it once again. 22 on the shot clock. And this is actually a good possession for Maryland. Getting a chance to get some good looks, slow the game down. But an unforced, unforced turnover for them now and the ball going the other way. And we have seen both teams with some frustrating turnovers today, that being one of them certainly for Maryland. 16 turnovers for the Terrapins. Notre Dame looking ahead for Kavanaugh. They're able to hold on now with Dobson. Here's Jacoboys. Chris Cavanaugh will circle back. Now gets around a screen. Cavanaugh with the shot. McNaney with the save.
Logan McNaney has come up with some really key saves this afternoon for the Terrapins. They still hold on to a one goal edge. And after Notre Dame going on a three goal run, that's a big stance for McNaney and the Terrapins. Here's Chorus. Jack Brennan, I'll wait for Owen Murphy to come on. Oliver, back to Murphy, or check that Brennan. Now Keegan Kahn, tried to get it over for Murphy. It hit the post there, it's still loose on the ground. Trying to track down this ground ball. Molliver comes away with it. Now he shoots and scores. Eric Molliver with his second goal of the day and Maryland back ahead by two. Each team showing the effort on the ground ball situations. But if you notice here, there's a few Maryland middies hanging back. Gets the ground ball, no defender really goes to pick him up, and he's got that timing room to make it a two-goal game. Big goal for the Terrapins responding to that three-to-nothing run from Notre Dame. As you see the Irish head coach, Kevin Corrigan, Irish trying to come back on their home field. Maryland had a four goal edge, nine to five. But then it was a 3 0 run before that response from Oliver. Maryland with another faceoff when they continue to dominate in that category. Seventeen to five in favor of the Terps at the faceoff X. And what was tough about that last one is looked like Notre Dame actually won the clamp, but the wing play can be just as effective, and it shows by the head of the ball now. Wisnowskis shot from a wide angle, and the save made from Entman. Hallenbeck brings it over midfield. Just over eight minutes to go, a two-goal game. Maryland looking to go to 5-0 on the season. Notre Dame will take a timeout. With the Irish trailing by two. And that will send us to a break. Number one, Maryland hoping to hold on in the, on the road here in South Bend. With GEICO, we can easily bundle home and car insurance and save even more. Yeah, just like that breakfast burrito. There isn't too much hot sauce, is there? I have a sensitive palate. I actually like hot sauce. How about guacamole? I don't really know what we're talking about anymore. Burritos. Sure. GEICO. Come on, Peloton, let's go. Work it. Fight. 10 to 8, and Logan McNaney, the goalie, has made a big impact this afternoon. Well, Connor, you said how he had his first win as a goalie at Notre Dame, and you could tell by his individual effort today and how he's making all of these saves, he wants another one. It's coming up big, and it's a big reason why they are up by two. 11 saves, 579 save percentage on the afternoon. Helping the Terrapins to this two goal lead. Jackaboys. Brings it in behind to Kavanaugh. Chris Kavanaugh looking for some space. Now Dobson with a shot that goes high over the crossbar. It will stay with Notre Dame. And that's a dangerous opportunity for Notre Dame. Dobson 
right over the middle of the field, having all that space. He likes those shots. Here is Dobson once again. Chris Cavanaugh for Meyer. Now Pat Cavanaugh whiffed on a pass attempt, trying to scoop up the ground ball. It's still loose right near the end line. Cavanaugh comes away with it, and now a flag. Only three on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Initially, Makar had some solid defense when the ball was on the ground. Fighting to get it, but Kavanaugh again, just showing the effort that he has and how bad he wants to have the ball. Drawing that penalty, and now man up for Notre Dame. Brett Makar with the penalty. So Notre Dame out of the man up. They're one for three with the extra man this afternoon. <laughs> and for Ooh, Notre Dame coming out of that timeout, I'm sure you drew up something where you wanted to score to make it a 10-9 game, but now you get a second chance having a man up opportunity to make that happen. Westland for Jackaboys. Jack of boys with a shot, he buries it. Notre Dame back within one with under seven to play. Jack of boys looking to pick up where he left <laughs> off last year. Gets this chance on man up. And with that underhand, a little bit of a riser makes it a one goal game. Second goal of the day for Jacobois. He had four goals in that quarterfinal game last year. So back to a one goal game, Maryland with possession. Bolivar with a shot that hits the side of the net. Hey, Lily, come look at this hockey lineup that I have. Second line. Here comes Harris Pretty the other way. An opportunity for Look. Notre Dame to tie it up. Adam Gittleman. Zizou. L. Lily Carey. Just the kind of game we thought this would be. Carey. Between a couple of top ten teams. Schellenberger. Grayson Soliday. Is this just like a thing where you put every <laughs> single person you've ever met in your life on this? <laughs> what happens is they say you get extra points if you change somebody. Here is Jack of Boys. Change, uh, change somebody's name. So when I go in that chain, I'm gonna now Westland trying to find Jack Boys. Meyer scoops up the ground ball to keep possession for the Irish. Connor's on there. Dobson. I'd have to change Alan Gittleman. Down for Pat Cavanaugh. Westland lost possession. And it's taken by McNaney. And my best. Wow. Fairman. Oh, Under five and a half to play. Oh, I thought I asked you if it was in there. Yeah, it is. Ten to nine, the Maryland lead. You just might have gone through it all. Put another piece in, I'll print it again. It says the ink is getting low, but I think it, it'll turn a couple more. Letting their defense get some time off. I don't. I can't do it smaller with this. So you don't have to force it. Donville for long, shot and a score. What a snipe! Five more minutes of game Long and the lead back to two for the Terps. Would you the put execution one in? from this play all around okay. is great for the Terrapins. Look at this shot. Whew. Almost getting <laughs> to that top corner. And when you start low like that, and that release angle, it's tough for Entman to make the save. It doesn't get much better than that. Kyle Long with a four-point day, two goals, two assists. 
Showing why he's on the Twarton Award watch list heading into this season. Notre Dame scoops up the ground ball with Reynolds. Allen Beck. Waiting for Notre Dame to make some substitutions. Four and a half minutes to go. Maryland ahead by two. Angrick goes to goal line extended. Now Cavanaugh at the X. Pat Cavanaugh looking for room on Maycar. Now for Chris Cavanaugh. Now Angrick. It's a pass over for Gray. Riley Gray tries to find some room. Goes for Cavanaugh. He went into traffic, goes down, and a whistle. Maryland awarded possession. And when the quarter's winding down and the game's winding down, that's a big stance, staying on both the Kavanaugh brothers' hands and causing a turnover. Maryland nearly turned it over, but Boyer couldn't hold it on, and now Maryland does turn it over with three and a half to go. You can see the sense of urgency starting to increase for Notre Dame, trailing by two goals. So we take another look. Kavanaugh looking to dive in between his defender and the crease. Ends up on the ground, and while the ball goes the other way for a moment, they'll get it back. So Maryland takes a timeout with the Terrapins ahead by two, 328 to play. What do you think John Tillman wants <laughs> to tell his team here with the two-goal lead? It's really keeping on doing exactly what they have been doing. There's a reason why they're up by two. There's a reason why the Kavanaugh's and some of the other guys are a little bit more in check today. And so it's continuing their efforts exactly as they planned. And another thing, too, for Maryland, we mentioned that one of the best faceoff units in the country coming to this game, sixth in the country in faceoff percentage. They've won 18 compared to six for Notre Dame. So that makes it difficult for the Irish trying to come back. They've come within one a few times. They just haven't been able to tie it up. And you referenced that earlier. It can become a make-it-take-it game when you win those faceoffs. So being able to gain possession the way they do is a big reason, and it's something that's important for these Terrapins, especially as the game comes to an end. Well, it's an incredible environment here in South Bend. Just a slight breeze, 65 degree day, a full house at Arlotta. Perfect weather, two great teams. This is what it's all about in college lacrosse. And having it this early into the season, a game like this, it's just special for the sport, gaining some traction and some fans here in South Bend. I mean, it really feels like May in more ways than one. <laughs> You've <laughs> got the weather. And, that's true. <laughs> and it feels like an NCAA tournament game. And it wouldn't be surprising for these teams to meet up once again down the road. Crowd making some noise here at Arlotta. Trying to encourage the home team in their comeback <laughs> effort. <laughs> Maryland is led by as many as four, but that's the largest the lead has stretched for any team today. It's been a tightly contested battle throughout. And that's just showing each team realizing as one's pulling away, they start stepping up again. And so for Notre Dame, with three and a half minutes left, what else do they have in the tank? Here's Antum in the goalie. For Dobson. Notre Dame will set up their offense with just over three minutes to play. Dobson down the right side for Kavanaugh. Out to Chris Kavanaugh. 
Unable to find a shot. Now Jackaboys working the right side. Pass missed the stick of Dobson. A turnover for the Irish back to Maryland. That's been a pain point for them all day. Some of those unforced turnovers. And one of them coming with just two and a half minutes left in the game. A really critical turnover as it gives Maryland an opportunity to kill plenty of clock. With just over two minutes to go. 17th turnover for Notre Dame. Here's Donville. And it's not time yet, but if Notre Dame's unable to make a stop here or to score, you'll see Entman come out of the net to try to provide some pressure. Just under 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Long down the middle of the field for Wisnowskis. DeMeo's shot goes high and wide. 19 on the shot clock. Minute and a half to play. Khan. Looking to get a shot off. Had it blocked. Picked up by Boyer for Notre Dame. <laughs> Irish have to hurry. Trailing by two. 120 to play. And a timeout for Notre Dame with 106 remaining. Maryland ahead 11 to nine. What do you think Kevin Corrigan's telling his team here? Well, they're gonna look to really set up something that will be a quicker goal given there's a minute left and they're still down by two. So the idea of let's get a good look quickly, let's get back to the face off X, let's get a win and get into overtime. So in a way, you, you almost have to set up a couple of different scenarios here trailing by two. Exactly. You could be planning for a couple of goals. I mean, more than anything, though, you want to get this first one. That's what's most important. Get this first one in, and then the faceoff will come next. You have to imagine that the Kavanaugh brothers be involved in some way if Notre Dame is able to get another goal. But Maryland has been tenacious defensively today. Really impressed by the play of guys like Ajax Zapatello, Brett Makar, and then, of course, the goalie, Logan McNaney. And you wonder if that the pressure that they've been providing could also cause even the unforced turnovers that Notre Dame has had for today. Really does have that NCAA tournament feel. Big crowd on hand, great atmosphere. Both schools with plenty of fans on hand here in South Bend. Plenty of youngsters as well out getting to watch some great lacrosse. There you see some of the Maryland fans. Plenty that made the drive out here to Indiana from Maryland. As you see the Notre Dame women's lacrosse team, they'll be playing tomorrow. Casey Choma, Bridget Dehan, some of the stars of that Notre Dame women's team. And there is Maryland head coach John Tillman. Hoping that his Terps can hold on for a huge win on the road. Under a minute to play now. Jacoboyce on the right side for Kavanaugh. Pat Kavanaugh circles back against Maycar. Kavanaugh trying to find room. He fires, but wide. He somehow split that double team and got the shot off. Unable to bury it, but the ball stays with them. Under 40 seconds. Kavanaugh. Tried to get in close to the cage. Possession awarded back to Maryland with 30 seconds to go. 
And now the Terrapins just need to hold on to possession to come away with the victory here on the road. Kavanaugh looking to create some type of penalty, maybe push in the back. But clean and better defense for Maryland. McNaney gives over for Puglisi. We'll just launch it downfield. Content to waste some time. Only 12 seconds for Notre Dame. It's ruled as a shot. So Maryland keeps possession with five seconds down to four. And the top ranked Maryland Terrapins, three and a half to go. Timeout is taken. They can celebrate knowing they're going to earn a big win on the road. And having a game like this, continuing to show why you're the best team in the nation right now. And for Notre Dame, last week against Georgetown was tough, but they fought back, and today they're fighting back. It's still early for them. It's still early in this season for them to continue to develop and play strong. And for both of these teams, they took the challenge scheduling very tough in the non-conference because both play in strong conferences, the ACC, the Big Ten. So Notre Dame won't take too much of a hit for falling to Maryland, but Maryland will earn plenty of credit for another ranked victory, their fourth in five games. And what you just said too, Connor, all out of conference, which has been really good and impressive for these guys. An 11 to nine win for the top ranked Maryland Terrapins at number seven, Notre Dame. Maryland remains undefeated and should hold on to that top ranking in the country. Brian, we had a great game today. Your final thoughts on this one. It's exactly what we thought. It was gonna be a battle to the end. It was close, but Maryland coming into South Bend and getting the victory. So for our producer, Casey Frawley, my partner, Brian Benedict, and our entire crew, I'm Connor Klingen saying so long from South Bend, where the final score is the number one Maryland Terrapins 11 and number seven Notre Dame nine. This has been a presentation of the ACC Network.